The Helitrike is a single seat coaxial helicopter with weight shift control being developed at the National Aerospace Laboratories, Bangalore, India. It is mainly intended for sports and hobby flying and has been inspired by the powered hang glider, which also has weight shift control. The helitrike has an upper section containing the rotors, the gearbox, the engine, and the tail vane. The lower section, which houses the pilot and the skid, is suspended from the top section at the hang point. The helitrike has two contra-rotating coaxial rotors of 14 feet diameter. The rotors are of the underslung teetering type and are driven through a bevel gearbox and a 65 horsepower engine. The empty weight of the helitrike is about 195 kilograms. There is provision for collective adjustment of the blade pitch, but unlike unconventional helicopters, there is no cyclic pitch control. The motion of the helitrike is controlled by the pilot's action on the control bar. Pitching is affected through forward-backward movement and roll through lateral movement. Your control is through foot-operated pedals, which move the vanes on the tail boom. Presently, the rotor lift is controlled through the rotor speed, but subsequently, it will be through collective pitch control. Flight testing of a new untested, unconventional design of a single seat helicopter is no doubt a challenging proposition. We found test pilots of conventional helicopters hesitant to take up flying the helitrike. So Over we have tried to devise a low risk route. Initial tests with the prototype restricted with several cables proved to be disastrous. We soon learned that a helicopter does not like to be tethered. At most, we found that a short single tether, which permits a lift of about four inches from the ground, is safe and gives some feel for practicing the initial hover, which is the crux of all helicopter flying training. The video shows tethered tests in progress and are quite useful for giving practice to the pilot. However, with such a short tether, it is impossible to achieve a steady hover. Also, practice in side waves movement and some yaw control could be done. We also constructed a moving platform on caster wheels to which the helitrike was tethered. This gave the pilot a chance to get a feel for the control movement in a relatively safe manner. However, the inertia of the platform meant that the system was too sluggish to simulate pre-flight conditions. After sufficient practice with tethered tests and moving platform, untethered tests were attempted in an open field under calm weather conditions. Rotor lift was gradually increased by increasing the engine speed. At a rotor speed of about 700 RPM, the lift was sufficient to lift the top section and the controls felt light. Around 800 RPM, the whole aircraft lifts and can be controlled by the control bar and pedals. As the video shows, it was possible to get fairly controlled movements in the desired direction close to the ground. 
Hover was possible for short periods of time, but the movements were quite sensitive and twitchy. Hence, lifting of the craft to a higher position was not attempted. In fact, during one of the sliding maneuvers, the skid touched the ground and resulted in a tip over which damaged the rotors. A gentle over. The present status is that the prototype has been rebuilt after the incident. A flybar stabilizer unit has been designed and fabricated for improving the stability of the top rotor. Next, we are looking for a simple experimental way to assess the stability of the craft. The use of high-speed photography to determine the time lag between the rotor tip path plane and the rotor shaft appears to be a promising one, as will be explained in the model studies in the present paper. This would give us some confidence to undertake further flight testing of the prototype. Thank you.